Hello everyone, my name is Bethany Williams and today I'll be covering both the modified Thomas test and the regular Thomas test. There's two different types of flexibility, dynamic and static. Dynamic flexibility is going to be the ability for your muscles to move at the full range of motion at a joint during an exercise or active movement. Static flexibility is going to be an absolute range of motion that your joint can reach and your muscles can reach without excessive movement. First, we'll start with the modified Thomas test and this is how you will conduct it. You'll have the client sit down on a flat surface. Then you'll have them clasp their hands around the outside of their knee and slowly lean back into a supinated position, allowing their back to stay as straight as possible. You'll try to have them maintain 90 degrees of flexion at the knee. If you're not able to complete 90 degrees of flexion at the knee and it's higher, this could conclude that the rectus femoris is tight due to its attachments at both the hip and the knee. If you see a gap between the table and the hamstring, this could conclude that the iliopsoas is tight due to the fact that it isn't too tight to allow the hip to fully extend. In case there is both a gap between the table as well as a higher degree of flexion, this could be a combination of both the rectus femoris and the iliopsoas being tight. Next, we're going to be looking at the regular Thomas test. To conduct this test, you'll have the patient lay in a supine position on a flat surface while their hands are pronated at their sides. Then they'll grab onto their knee and flex at the hip and the knee and allow the knee to pull into the chest. If you look and see a gap between the hamstring and the surface, this means that the iliopsoas is tight, causing an interior pelvic tilt. When conducting these tests, you want to ensure that you are testing both sides and both legs, just to ensure that there are no imbalances between either side. Conduct them three times in a row to familiarize them and allow them to reach their full range of motion. Both the modified Thomas test and the regular Thomas test are very good to utilize to be able to test the hip flexors. They allow us to focus on various aspects of these movements to be able to figure out what is tight and how we can go forward with that. With that being said, there's a couple of different things that you can look for. The first one is hyperlodosis in the back, which indicates that the iliopsoas is tight, leading to that anterior pelvic tilt. If you're doing the modified or regular Thomas test and the femur is abducted, this indicates that the lateral thigh may be tight. Another big thing to consider is how to actually collect the data when you're conducting the tests. In order to collect quantitative data and numerical numbers, what you can do is use a goniometer to test both the hip and knee flexion. Along with this, you can also collect some qualitative data. You can take images perpendicular to your client to be able to see their entire foot, knee, and hip just so you can get an idea of how their flexibility is changing over time. There's a couple of common mistakes that can happen when conducting a modified Thomas test. The first one being not having enough flexion at the hip that is flexed. As their trainer, you can assist them by pressing their knee into their chest for them, allowing for that full stretch to happen at their hip flexors. Another common mistake is not having enough extension in the extended hip. A couple of other issues that can be found is overactive muscles pulling in certain directions, being able to see the client from different angles to see any kind of an abduction, abduction flexion, extension, or various issues that may be occurring, as well as moving too fast throughout the movements and not truly allowing your body to stretch into the full position. In order to take the results and apply them into the exercise program for your individual, what you're gonna do is you're gonna stretch any of the components of muscles that were tight, and you're gonna strengthen their reciprocal inhibitors. In this case, if the iliopsoas is tight, you're going to use some stretching movements that involve external rotation at the hip. An example of this can be the world's greatest stretch. You would also strengthen the glutes, which are the reciprocal inhibitor. An option for this would be RDLs or glute kickbacks. Following that, you would also add some corrective movements with full range of motion to not only strengthen the stabilizers, but just help with the movements that involve those muscles. If the glutes or abductors are tight, what you can do is stretch them by doing any kind of movements that involve hip flexion and extension of the knee. This will also assist in helping stretch the hamstrings. An option for this could be active assisted leg raises with the band. You would also strengthen the iliopsoas and the rectus femoris as these are the reciprocal inhibitors, which are the hip flexors. If the hip extensors are tight, you're going to stretch them and strengthen the hip flexors. An option for this could be either hanging leg raises to also work on that core stability or walking lunges again. By stretching the muscles that are too tight and strengthening the muscles that are underactive, you can use these in their program two to three times a week to allow the flexibility to improve over time. By conducting the Thomas test or the modified Thomas test, you are able to take the results and use them in the future to compare them and see how much they've improved in their flexibility.